My name is Michael Anderson, and I'm not what you'd call a Rhodes Scholar. I don't have much in the way of philosophy either, but I know one thing. In this world, you have to pay as you go. Sometimes, all you have. That's a lesson I thought I learned nine years ago during what folks in these parts call the storm of the century. But I was wrong. I only started learning during the big blow. I finished just last week. I grew up in Maine. But in a way, I never really lived in Maine. I think anyone from my part of the world would say the same. Folks from Little Tall send their taxes to Augusta, same as other folks. And we got either a lobster or a loon on our license plate, same as other folks. We root for the University of Maine's team, especially the women's basketball team, same as other folks. Hey, Sonny, you forgot one. One for the pot, good luck. Better double it, Sonny, that weatherman says it's coming on. Seen him come in every winter. They howl in, they howl out. July always comes. Still, they say this one's gonna be something special. But we ain't the same. Life out on the islands is different. We pull together when we have to. We'll get through it. Yeah, like always. Well, you mind us well, you mind the boat. But with a Frenchman like you know. Daniel. <laughs> and we can keep a secret when we have to. We kept our share back in 1989. And the people who live there keep them still. I know. I stay in touch. Say it's gonna snow a bit. Oh, easy, Ferd. It's just a cap of snow. <laughs> Trouble don't cross the reach. Ain't that why we live here? Yeah. Well, we get in trouble, we're in trouble. the Great Plains in the Midwest. And you see its track before you in all its glory. Now look down here because, folks, here comes trouble. This is a very atypical storm, almost a winter hurricane. It's the sort of knuckle duster that paralyzed most of the East Coast and buried Boston back in 1976. The first person on Little Tall to see Andre Linoge was Martha Clarendon. also the last person she ever saw. Now, we haven't seen one of comparable power since then until now. Will it give us a break and stay out to sea as these storms sometimes do? Unfortunately, the Weather Network <sighs> Storm Track computer says no. Oh so the my. east of the big end. Now, northern New England, if none of this changes tonight, you are going to win the booby prize. Look at this. 
Now, if neither of these two systems veer, they're going to collide oh, over the state dear. of the Bad news for our friends in Yankee land. We're talking hurricane force winds and phenomenal amounts of snow. To this, you can add region-wide blackouts. Now, no one wants to hear oh, this, but folks in the New England area... Days, you're apt to be getting a whole winter's worth of snow. Now, we sometimes overuse the phrase storm of the century, but if these two storm tracks converge, as we now think they will, the phrase will be no exaggeration, believe me. Judd Parkin is in next to talk about storm preparation. No panic here, just practicality. First, this. Oh. I'm expected to hit Banger last night. It's not really When they tell you the world's coming to an end, they want to sell you cereal. And they tell you not to panic. It's serious. Oh, hold on. I'm getting there as fast as I can. I broke my hip last summer, and I'm still as slow as cold molasses. Can I help you? Born in lust, turn to dust. I beg your pardon? Born in sin, come on in. That's number one. Want to say to yourself, how are my batteries? Am I going to have to keep a portable radio going? Possibly a small TV. And if you have a generator, time to check your gasoline supplies or your diesel. Pot short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout. Just tip me over and pour me out. Which is the cataclysmic powers of Earth, or is it the punishments of God? Now, for the first time anywhere, punishments of God's of me. 90 minutes of terror unlike anything you've ever seen before. Cash, chip, or money order for $19.95 to the punishments of God. P.O. Box 111, Bangor, Maine. Do it now, before it's too late. Don't forget the bean supper next Wednesday week, Michael. I'm going to need every deacon I can lay my hand on. I'll be there. If we get to the next three days, I guess. I'm sure we will. God takes care of his own. Michael, I thought for sure you'd still have pork chops. There you go. Ground chops, too. Dear, don't you have any plain old hamburger, Michael Anderson? Yep. Right. Here. Okay, folks, listen. It's a storm. That's all. We've gotten through plenty of these before, and we'll get through plenty after. So everyone, hey, calm down. Stop acting like mainlandish. Oh. Oh, be smart, Mike Anderson. No, Miss St. Pierre, I won't be smart. Yeah? Ho hold on just a second. Mike, hey, hey Mike, it's, you got to call. It's your wife. She says she's got a little problem down at the daycare center. Uh oh, is she hot under the collar? How do I know where she's hot? She's your wife. Hatch, want to take over for me? Yo, Mike, hey, can I borrow your whipping chair? Go see about that, huh, Mike? Hey, Ma, what's up? Uh, I got a little problem here. Can you come? Well, uh, I got a little problem of my own, hon. What's yours? Honey, don't do that. Just hold still. Annie, keep her calm. Okay. Pippa, what about Pippa? Oh, shh. Please, quiet. The last thing in the world I want is Alton Hatcher coming down on me. Something about Pippa. Oh, it's too late, babe. Uh, what's up? Pippa's got her head stuck in the stairs. It's not serious, I don't think. But 
I can't deal with a big storm and a crazed daddy all the same day. If uh, Hatch comes, you be with him. Uh, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll be down. Goodbye. What about Pippa? Uh, she's got a little stuck itis, I hear. Let's go see. I'm just like this when I was in the scouts. How upset does she sound, Mike? Molly? How about 0.5 on a scale from 1 to 10? Don't worry. Man, this is going to be one bad mother of a storm. Mike and your daddy will be here in another minute, and Mike will get you out. Are you hungry? Can I feed her, Mrs. Anderson? I fed the monkey ones of the Banger Fair. I'm not a monkey, Harry. Hey, look, you guys, I'm a monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Still, your Yankee is right off your head. Daddy! Oh, hey there. Pippa got her head stuck, and Don won't stop being a monkey. Mr. Anderson, I stop being a monkey as soon as she says. Well, that's great, Sally. I gotta put you down, Ralphie. Mm. Hey, hey, hey. Ow, hey, why'd you do that? You're acting smart. I ain't afraid of you. My dad's sound manager. He pays your salaries. Pushers get pushed. Donnie Beals, you remember that. It's a true fact of this sad life. Bushes get pushed. Honey, why, why'd you do this? How do you think here, Darren? What happened, darling? It was easy going out, but now I can't get back in. I think my head must be bigger on this side. Well, it is. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it smaller. You know how? No. How? I'm going to push your smaller button. Then your head will get smaller, and it'll slide out just as easy as it slid in. You understand, Peppa? <laughs> I'm gonna push your button now, okay? You ready? Mm -hmm. Close your eyes. Here we go. Beep! Zoom. Okay, your head's getting smaller. Now pull it out before oh. it gets big. There you go. Yay! Thank you. Really. No problem. I'm sorry if I called you away at a bad time. I saw a head like that when I couldn't get it to come out on my own. I just freaked out. I needed a break anyway. <laughs> The smaller button, huh? Everyone's got one. <laughs> Davy Hopewell in transition. He avoids the press. Stockton tries to steal the ball, but he doesn't have a chance. It's Davy Hopewell at the top of the key. Clock running out. Davy Hopewell's the Celtics' only hope. He shakes, he bakes, he.
Clarendon? This is Clarendon? It's Davy. Davy Hopewell? Are you all right? Hello? Anybody here? Davy, you'll never even play first string in high school. You're slow. You're a dwarf. Why don't you come on in here, Davy? I'll do you a favor, save you a no! lot of grief. Help! 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 Somebody kill Mrs. Clarendon! Help! Somebody help! Mrs. Clarendon's dead! Hopewell, what are you doing running down the middle of the road making a spectacle of yourself? Someone killed Mrs. Clarendon. That's nonsense. What are you talking about? There's blood everywhere and one of her eyes is out. Baby, it's... just calm down. It's on her cheek. Mrs. Kingsbury, you look after him. Give him a hot tea or better yet, give him some whiskey if you have any. Are you going to tell Mike Anderson? Well, not until I've had a look myself. First, there's more than one thing that a town manager can do, you know. You want help, Robbie Beals? No, that won't be necessary, George. I'll be fine. Careful, Mr. Beals. I think the guy stole the house. Come in? No, I'm fine. It was. Thanks for seeing after my little girl. My pleasure. comes to that. Two shorts and one long, that's right. Mike Anderson, of course. Those are the decisions we pay him to make, aren't they, dear? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say hello to Peter for you. Thanks. Thanks for calling, Betty. Tough day, huh? Betty Soames seems to think we have access to some secret forecast. Some kind of 
Gene Dixon psychic weather forecast? I guess, yeah. Or has most people in town seen this stuff? If they're not blind, they've seen it. You need to relax, Mike Anderson. How's little Pippa Hatcher? Whoa, that was fast. No secrets on the island. She's fine. She, she got her head stuck in the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's outside in the car right now. He's doing his homework for the big blow of 89. Ain't that just like Alton and Melinda Hatcher's daughter? Perfect. People know this one's bad, Mike. If they hear the siren, they'll come. You needn't worry about that. Now, you came to look at the emergency shelter set up, didn't you? Thought it might not be a bad idea. We can handle 300 for three days, 150 for a week. If what I'm hearing on the radio is right, we may have to. Anybody here? Tens of thousands of dollars waiting for you. So don't wait. Call now. Pick up the phone and dial 1 800 1 Sticker. That's 1 800 1 Sticker. Get what's coming. Oh my God. Haven't you been through it? Good. You know it is. How's the supply closet? Full, just like you want it. Concentrates mostly. Pour the water over the powder and then gag it down. But nobody will starve. Did you do all this yourself? And me and Pete's sister Tavia. Be discreet, you said. Don't panic anyone. Yeah, that's what I said. So, how many people know we're stocked for World War III? Everyone. in sin come on in you were with a whore in Boston when your mother died in Machias Ma was in that crappy old nursing home they tore down last fall the one where they found the rats in the pantry right she choked to death calling your name isn't that sweet but that's all right Robbie she's waiting for you in hell and she's turned cannibal when you get there, she's going to eat you alive over and over and over again. Because that's what hell is all about, Robbie. Repetition. I think in our hearts, most of us know that. Catch. by the oncoming storm. The forecast calls for destruction tonight, death tomorrow, and Armageddon by the weekend. This could be the end of life as we know it. Seems unlikely, but we can always hope. And we're back in just a moment. Stay with us. This is rubbing deals for Constable Anderson. Come back. Come back, damn it, Anderson. We got a murder down here. Come back, Anderson. Can you hear me? He's always in room when it comes to unwanted advice. Where is he? Is there anybody listening on this thing? Anderson! Robbie, this is Tess Marchant. No, I don't want you. I want Anderson. I can't do his job. Mine as well. He had an emergency at home. Alton went with him. What do you mean an emergency at home? We got an emergency at home. 
Marks you right here. We got the old woman murdered. We got a, a lunatic in Martha Clandon's living room. I What's he talking about? Who's murdered? Martha, he says. Robbie, I'm here. Just a minute. You folks, back off now. Give me a little privacy. Give me 6000 a year to be constable. Let me do the job you pay me for. Where are you, Robbie? Come back. Where am I? I'm at Martha Clarendon's house. Where do you think I am? I'm keeping the man inside at bay. Now you get your ass down here. Let's take another ride, all right? You and Kat mind the store. All right, folks, just stay here and finish your shopping, all right? There's nothing you can do down on Atlantic Avenue. It's no surly. Look at there, the mainland. Can't see over there no more. It's time to get in while you can. Can't even see the reach no more. Time to head down to the town hall. Whether you've heard the siren or not. Shotgun? Yeah, better have it. Just make sure that safety's on, Alton Hatcher. Well, it's about time. Put that thing away. No such thing, Constable. You do your job, I'll do mine. Your job is real estate. Why don't we at least lower it, please? Come on, Robbie, it's in my face. And I know it's loaded. All right, now what happened? Well, I was... I was driving over to the town office as I saw Davy Hopewell just running down the middle of the street screaming that Martha Clarendon's dead and that somebody killed her. So I came on down here and it's true. Jeez. Awful. The one that did it still inside? He spoke to me. What'd he say? told me to get out. He said, you get out or I'll kill you too. I don't know. This isn't the time for an interrogation. What do you look like? I barely got a look at him. All right, Hatch. You stay on my left, keep the barrel of that scattergun pointed toward the ground. Leave that safety on till I tell you to take it off. And you, you stay exactly where you are, please. You're the constable. I'd be careful if I was you. Even if there is a guy, he's probably gone out back by, by now, don't you think? Uh, she ain't got but a five-foot garden fence. Waves and volcanic eruptions. Order now while you still have time. Send cash, check, or money order for 1995 to Punishments of God Part 2. PO Box 111, Bangor, Maine. That's Punishments of God. Welcome back to the Weather Network. Conditions along the New England coast are expected to worsen dramatically before sunset. Not that our friends down here can see the sun go down tonight, I'm afraid. We are expecting mail for the Massachusetts. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god, Mike, she's got no face left. Oh god. Hatch. Are oh, you gonna be alright? Hatch. Because if you're not. I want you to hand me that 12 gauge and go back out to Robbie. I'm okay. You sure. Oh, yeah? Raise your hands. Up over the chair. I want to see him clear as day. 
You got two guns pointed at you. One of them's a scatter. Put your hands together. Shoot him. I, uh... If he shoots, he'll get us both. That thing's still loaded with buckshot. Also, he's still got the safety on. Remember to wear gloves. That was good. On your feet. Patch, close the door. Is that wise? I mean, uh. Uh, this being a crime scene at all, you think we should leave things the way they are? Leave the door open. The crime scene's gonna be under six feet of fresh powder. Now close the door. Hold on. What's your name? Andre Linoge. All right, let's go. trying to reach you for almost 10 minutes. Well, I've mostly been out on the porch sending kids over to their parents. I sent them home early. What's up, Katrina? Well, I don't want, want you to be scared or anything, but we got word that there's been a murder on the island. Old Martha Clarendon. Mike and Hatch just went over there. Wait, wait, wait. Are you sure? <laughs> well, I'm not really sure about anything right now. You know, this place has been a madhouse all day. They just went over there, and Mike wanted me to call you just let you know that everything's under control. Is it? Yeah, probably. Anyway, he just, he wanted me to call you before anyone else did. So if, if you see Melinda Hatcher... Um, she, uh, she, she just left here with a Angie Carver. They're carpooling. Uh, uh, you can reach, reach them at home in 15 minutes or so, but you, well, you better make that 20. Look, there's, um, there's no chance I, I... This is, I, I don't know, some kind of a joke or, or a prank? No. Robbie Beals called it in and he doesn't exactly do humor, you know? Yeah, I know. He said that the person who did this might still be there. And I, I, don't, I don't know if Mike would want me to tell you that, but I just, I thought you had the right to know. Molly? I'm coming down to the store. If Mike gets there before I do, you tell him to stay put. I don't think that he'd want Thanks, you to. Thanks, Kat. Hey, Ralphie, honey. 
Let's go down to the market and see your daddy, huh? What do you say? Daddy, yay! Yay. Come on, let's get you dressed. What, are you going to put him in there? Not unless you want to get in the back seat with him and babysit. Get in there, mister. Put that down. Remember what I said, Robbie? Hell is repetition. He talks a lot of nonsense. I think he's crazy. How do you know your name? You tell him? I don't know, but I do know that no sane person would want to hurt Martha Clarendon. All right, I'll... I'll come over to the store with you and help you clear this up. We're gonna have to get in touch with the state police. Robbie, I know this goes against your grain, but you're gonna have to let me handle this. I am the town manager here, in case you forgot. I've got responsibility. Yeah, so do I. And they're clearly divided in the town charter. Right now, Ursula needs a lot more over at the town hall than I need you at the constables. Come on, Hatch. Listen here, you're getting a little big for your britches. gonna do with him? Keep your voice down. We'll uh, have to try and raise the state police barracks in Machias. Probably was right about that much. But uh, what are the chances they'll take him off our hands in this? Hatch, uh, when we were in the hall, I heard the TV on, did you? At first, yeah, the weather. Then, then the guy must have... Uh, It was busted. Busted all the hell and gone. He didn't do it while we were in the hallway either. You bust a TV picture to it makes it sound like poof. You know, we would have heard it. Must have been the radio.
be the cold. Anybody in there? All right, never mind. Go around and open it from the other side. You want me to leave you out here alone with him? Unless you happen to see Superman hanging out in the alley. Maybe we could bring him around the front? Through the store? With everyone doing their storm shopping? I don't think so. Go on now. What happened, Beals? Is Martha really dead? She's dead, all right. You haven't heard from him? I haven't heard from him. Patch. Hi, oh, Molly. Where's Mike? Is he all right? Oh, he's fine. He's out back with the prisoner. I just have to let him in. Is he alone? I never saw him before in my life. What are they doing out back? Give me what I want and I'll go away. What is it you want? I did. Then wail on it. It's probably ice stuck in the jam. Yeah. Let me. Anderson! You're gonna have to come around and take him in through the store. Patch? Yeah. Come around. Alone. Right now. Remember what I said, Mr. Anderson. And when the time comes, we'll talk. Mike wants you folks to, uh, to move back on both sides. No one in aisle two. Uh, we've got us a bad guy, and we can't bring him in through the back door like we'd like to, so uh, go ahead, move back, and give us some room. Why'd he kill her? How could you just move back, Pete? Uh, Mike's been standing out there in the snow, and his feet are pretty cold by now. Also, we'll all feel much better once we uh, get this guy locked up, so uh, just move back and uh, give us a clear way up that second aisle. Not one wrong move, Mr. Lenoge. You mind me now.
Mike? Straight down the aisle. Nowhere else. Come on, let's go. Peter Godzo. My favorite seafood wholesaler standing shoulder to shoulder with my favorite politician. How's the fish business? Not so good, is it? Lucky you've got the marijuana business to fall back on. How many bales have you got wrapped up in the warehouse right now? Ten? Twenty? Forty? Better be sure you got it wrapped up good, Pete. There's gonna be a hell of a storm surge tonight when the tide comes high. Come on, move! Cat Withers. You're looking well. And why not? It's just an in-office procedure these days, nothing to it. I don't suppose you've told your folks about it yet, or Billy. <laughs> move. Or I'll move you. My advice would be go ahead. What's a little scrape between friends these days? Ralphie? <laughs> I know you. You do? You're Ralph Emmerich Anderson, and I know something else. What? You've got a fairy saddle on your nose. That's what my daddy calls it. You bet. And speaking of your daddy... Why are you wearing those? <laughs> because I choose to. Go on. Go see your dad. Get him out of here! Get him out of here! Don't shoot him, Daddy! He knows about the fairy saddle! I'm not gonna shoot him. Not if he goes where he's supposed to. Hey! Hey! What do you know about Katrina? How do you know about that? Get away from him! This man's a killer. Stay out of his way, Billy Soames. Stay out of mine, too. Also, clean yourself up. Before he gets too self-righteous, Katrina, ask him how well he knows Jenna Freeman. What do you know about my sister? That horses aren't all she enjoys riding when the weather's hot. Right, Billy? Keep away from this man, all of you. Mr. Lenosha. Put your hands up and grab the bars. Now spread your legs. Wider. I'm gonna pat you down. If you move, my good friend Alton Hatch is gonna save us all a lot of trouble. Don't even twitch, Mr. Lenosha. You put your filthy hands on my son. So don't you so much as twitch. son's face. Kiss my son's nose. Don't you tell me to take it easy. Where's your wallet, sir? Where's your wallet? My 
Where's your bank card? Right. Where's your blood donor card? Where's right. your discount card from Value Mart? Right. What is it that you call to get here? Huh? Answer me. Where's your wallet? Where's Mike. your wallet? Stop it. Stop it. Mike, what are you doing? Mike. Take your boots off. I'll have to let go of the bars to do that. They lace up. If you move, you're never gonna have constipation problems again. Kick them off. Step into the cell, Mr. Lanouche. You move slowly. Keep your hands where I can see him. that? Did you check to see if he has any identification on him? I want you out of here. I want to tell you something, Anderson. Your sense of humor is entirely not I don't want to have the time or patience for this. Now you get out or I'll throw you out. Come town meeting. We're maybe going to have a change in law enforcement on a little tall. Well, town meetings in March. This is February. Now get the hell out. that pretty well, don't you? Uh, like a diplomat. <sighs> All right. I gotta go tell Molly. You gonna leave me alone in here with him? You try to raise the state police, Machias. And, uh, you keep away from him. I should say you could count on that. Are you there? Do you read me, Machias? We've lost contact with the mainland. Peter Godzo. Peter. Mike? Mike, now what, what that fella said. It speaks crook stuff I ever heard. Yeah, look, uh... I want you to go on back there with Hatch. We're going to watch this guy. We're going to do it with the buddy system. Sure. Okay, you bet. I feel I have to close the store, folks. Uh, you're welcome to take what you've got. I trust you all to settle up after the storm's over. But right now, I've got a prisoner to deal with. Did that man really kill poor old Martha? In time, we'll have the whole story, but not now. now please, Del, all of you, please, just help me do my job. Uh, I want a few of you men to hang around for a couple of minutes. Uh, Kirk Freeman, Jack Carver, Sonny Brodigan, uh, Johnny Harriman, Billy, uh, Robbie. Machias, this is Alton Hatch on Little Tall. We have a police emergency here. Do you read, uh, Machias? Uh, come on back. 
Wow, Jace, this is this is Alton Houcher, channel 190, do you read? Hey, Dalt. You lost your good antenna off the roof. Try the phone. We better take the truck. We won't get 300 yards of the car. Never seen it come down so hard and fast. Hey, Billy, would you give Molly a hand with the car seat? Sure. I'll take the uh, island services truck and get somebody. Give me a lift when I get things squared away. Now, uh, got to go back to uh, Martha's. Just long enough to get it secure. Be careful. No? It was a long shot. You don't really have a load of Panama Red out there behind you at lobster traps, do you, Pete? Mommy, the island won't blow away, will it? No. No, honey, of course not. Come on, honey. Mike was right. You'd never make it in your car. Drive safe, Molly. Thanks, Billy. bit too much of what you've been selling there, Pete. Hey, shut up, Hatch. You don't talk about what you don't understand. Um, <clears throat> how's that a line there? Yeah. Way out. State police and Machias couldn't, couldn't raise anybody. Well, that doesn't really surprise me. All right, here's the duty roster, Hatch. You and Peter till 8 p.m. 
Kirk and Jack, 8 p.m. to midnight. Robbie and Sonny, midnight to 4 a.m. Billy Solomons and Johnny Harriman, 4 a.m. to late in the morning. After that, we'll uh, figure something else out. You okay with that? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah right now, stay alert. Both of you. Later on, we're gonna have that talk you wanted, sir. Hey, Mike, uh, what do we do with him if uh, Arsenal and Ravi blow the town whistle and bring everybody in? You can't very well put him in the corner of the town hall basement with a blanket and a cup of chowder. I don't know. Stay here with him, I guess. What, blow away if he blows away? You want to go home, Pete? No.
I'm so sorry, old girl. Robichaux's backyard from the sound. <laughs> Hope it didn't hit their porch. Jack, do you have to go back to the store today? Oh, uh, yeah. Daddy's going to guard the bad guy. Make sure he doesn't get away in a plane. <laughs> That's right, big guy. <laughs> it's a bad situation, hon. Everybody's got to do their part. Besides, I'll be with Kirk. It's the buddy system. If you hear the whistle, you just take Buster and go. I'll go before then if you get nervous. Just bundle up, take the snowmobile. Are you sure? Oh, uh, yeah. Fact is, the earlier you go, the better choice of bed you and Basta have to have. People are headed that ways already. They've seen the lights. Now, you be here or there when my watch is over. It don't matter. I'll find you. <laughs> suppose this one is yodeler's perch three letters Alp. Hmm, of course it is oh, this is a great program I'll let you try it later on if you want Everybody now to Casco Bay knows that Peter God's a wholesale nine pounds bot for every pound of lobster. Can't say I blame him. House full of women to spot. <laughs> Question is, Robbie, how'd that fella know? Likely in business together. Why would a fella want to kill a harmless old lady like Martha Clarendon unless he's high on drugs? You tell me that, Judge Kirby. That doesn't explain how he could know that Cat Withers was up in Derry for an abortion. Are there any more blankets? Robbie Beals, Henry Bright, you boys think you could go downstairs and bring up some more blankets out of that back store room, or uh, aren't you far enough along with your politicking yet? 
What's the matter, Ursula? All this a little too much for you, dear? Bobby, don't you think it's about time to blow the whistle and bring them in? Looks like enough of them have come in on their own. The rest can ride it out just fine. This is a bunch of foolishness as far as I'm concerned. Do you think our grandmothers and grandfathers got together at Town Hall when it stormed like a bunch of cave people scared of the lightning? No, they used the Methodist church. I got a picture I could show you, Stormer 27. You can point out your granddad in it if you want. Looks like he's stirring a pot of soup. Nice to know there's at least one fella in your family knew how to pitch in. Come on, Robbie. <laughs> Sign in before you go downstairs, folks. Room enough for everybody, but we need to know who we have. Hey, Ursula. Have you seen Mike? No, but I'll be able to catch his car radio if he calls in. It's not good for much else tonight anyway. Hey, take off your coat. Pitch in. How's it going? Oh, we're having a ball. <laughs> hey, Ralphie. Hi. <laughs> Coffee there, Pete? Peter? And that's to Peter. What? I asked if you wanted a soda or a coffee. Oh, no. I think so. You all right? Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> I was battling down from the storm all day. I guess I'm almost leaving my eyes open. <laughs> Hang in there. Uh, Jack Cobb and Kirk Freeman should be around in about 20 minutes or so.
God's sauce. Robbie, it's God's sauce. It's gone. What do you mean, it's gone? The whole thing. It's gone. What happened? I don't know. Ursula, blow the whistle! 